Leia here from leiaforsci.com slash MCAT and in this video we'll talk about normal force as it shows up in MCAT physics. Normal force is one of the less intuitive forces to learn because we take it for granted and don't always realize it's there. Say you have a block resting on a table. We know that the downward force of the object is the weight of the block or the force of gravity. But if the force of gravity is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity, you would expect the block to accelerate through the table, through the floor, and straight down to the center of the Earth, which is the source of that gravitational attraction. So why doesn't everything just sink through the surface it's resting on? That's where the normal force comes in. I like to think of the normal force as something that keeps things normal, because it's not normal for stuff to just go through the table. The normal force is a force that acts perpendicular to a surface that an object is resting on. So when a box sits on a horizontal table, the perpendicular force is upward, which is exactly opposite of gravity. That puts the box in equilibrium in the y direction, setting the sum of the forces y is equal to zero. And this is how most students have it memorized, where force normal, or simply n for the normal force, is equal to mass times gravity. The equation holds true in this case, but not in every case, so be careful. Don't memorize normal force as equal to mg. Understand that normal force is simply perpendicular to the surface that it rests on. For example, say I have the same table, but now I'm sitting under the table, and I am pushing the block up and holding the block against the table. In this case, I can say F of P or the force push is what I have upward and the force of gravity is still acting downward. If my force upward is the same as the force downward, then all I have in the y direction is the sum of the forces in the y direction equals F of P upward minus F of G downward and I have nothing else. But now let's say I'm pushing so hard that my force upward is greater than the force of gravity. For example, if the block is 10 newtons and I push with a force of 15 newtons, where is the other 5 newtons going to go? Well, in this case, I want to set it up as follows. We have the force of gravity downward, the force of pushing upward, and the difference is the normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface that it's resting on. If the block is resting upward on the bottom of the table, then the normal force should also be downward, and this is how we'll set it up. The force push is equal to force of gravity plus the normal force. I said the upward push is 15 newtons, and gravity is only 10 newtons, so we're assuming that the object has a mass of 1 kilogram times 10 meters per second squared for the acceleration of gravity gives me 10 newtons plus whatever I have for that normal force. So we'll call that plus x. If we subtract 10 newtons from both sides, then we get a net of 5 newtons, which is equal to the normal force. And this is why I write F sub n, so we don't mix it up with the n for newtons. In this case, the normal force is not equal to the force of gravity because of the way it's set up. But this isn't as likely to come up. What you're more likely to see is an inclined plane with an object resting on the surface. In this case, we'll have some angle theta. Remember that on an inclined plane, we change the x and y coordinate system to have x parallel to the plane and y perpendicular to the plane. If we set up a free body diagram, then the downward force is the force of gravity, which is in between the x and y components. So we'll break it up where the force of gravity in the x direction is force of gravity sine theta. If you're not comfortable with why I chose sine, go back to my trigonometry video on my website at layforsci.com slash mcatmath, and then take a look at the inclined planes video in the kinematics series layforsci.com slash physics. So we have the gravity broken down into force of gravity in the x direction using sine, and then force of gravity in the y direction using the cosine of theta. The reason this is important is if we look at the way the object is sitting on the inclined plane, the normal force has to be perpendicular to the surface, which is exactly equal and opposite the force of gravity in the y direction. 
So here's how we'd set it up. The sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero because if the object is moving, it'll only move in the x direction up or down the plane. But the object is not physically being lifted off the plane or going through the plane. And that means we have the normal force in the upward direction minus the force of gravity in the y direction equals zero, or simply Fn equals negative Fgy. And so to solve for the normal force in this case, we have the normal force is equal to the force of gravity or mass times the acceleration of gravity times cosine of the angle theta. It's not just mg, it's mg cos theta. This is critically important when you're dealing with friction, which we'll tackle in a separate video. But for the force of friction, you have mu sub k or sub s times n, which is the normal force. And you wanna make sure you don't just use mg because that'll throw off your calculations. You wanna make sure you remember to use cosine of theta to make sure you're taking that full y component of gravity on the plane. Be sure to join me in the next video where we talk about gravitational force near the surface on the Earth and objects orbiting or other planets. You can find my entire series along with my forces cheat sheet and practice quiz by visiting my website layerforsci.com forces. Are you stuck on a specific MCAT topic? I offer private online tutoring where I focus on your needs to strengthen your individual weaknesses. Tutoring details can be found using the link below or by visiting my website layforsci.com slash MCAT tutor. Are you overwhelmed by the sheer volume of information required for the MCAT? Are you worried that lack of a proper study plan and low MCAT score will prevent you from getting into medical school? My new ebook, the MCAT Exam Strategy, a six-week guide to crushing the MCAT, will help you formulate a concrete study plan by helping you figure out where you stand now, identify your goals, and figure out what it takes to reach them. And it's yours free when you sign up for my email newsletter at mcatexamstrategy.com. By signing up for my email newsletter, you'll also be the first to know when I have new videos, MCAT study guides, cheat sheets, tips, and so much more. The link again, mcatexamstrategy.com.